Wow, two videos in one weekend. Yes, you're lucky because, uh, well, I thought that uh, it's kind of a unique situation when you have a perfect saxophone that's just finished, it's just new, ready to go to, you know, to, to go on sale. And usually when you have a saxophone, it's never kind of perfect because once it's perfect, you know, you play it for a little while, it's always going to slowly on become less than perfect because, you know, when you play a lot, you're bending things a little bit, you're pushing things a little bit, you're pressuring things a little bit. So generally, you know, after a big overhaul or, you know, when saxophones are new, they're the best they can be as far as setup is concerned. And then as you play them, they slowly on, they get lesser and they get lesser, they get lesser. And then at some point you have to go to your tech to, you know, get everything straightened out again. But uh, this month is of course staying healthy and also uh, taking good care of your saxophone month. That's why I'm doing some promotion on my two courses, Staying Healthy and Sexy, about the 26 common health problems that saxophone players run into and how to prevent them. And Inside the Saxophone, which is my course that's all about kind of how to fix your own saxophone, how to locate all of the common problems and figuring out, oh, this is what's wrong and this is how, you know, you can fix most of them yourself or so that at least you can go to your tech and say, hey, something's wrong with my saxophone, but I already know that this is exactly the thing that's, uh, that's wrong with it and I, I want you to fix it, which makes you able to fix it quicker and usually will save you some money on that. So. Uh, in light of the second course, Inside the Saxophone, I thought I'd make this extra video today because I have a perfect saxophone here. The setup is completely 100%. I'm 100% happy with it, let's say. And uh, that affords me uh, the ability to show you, uh, kind of with a perfect example, how you can quickly recognize when you have a really good saxophone in your hand. So if you're buying a new horn or if you just kind of want to check your own horn really quickly without the luxury of like, you know, having like leak lights and all of this kind of, uh, you know, the more advanced tech that a saxophone builder or a saxophone technician has. Now, what are some easy tricks to kind of recognize when you have a really well set up saxophone in your hands? And this perfectly tuned uh, new one is of course a great uh, example to kind of show you a few of those things. So that's what I want to do in this video. So the very first thing to look for always when you have a new or you know a used saxophone in your hands that you're you know considering buying or playing is what I like to call the pop factor. And basically what that means is that when your pads have a good seal, like a hundred percent accuracy, they really pop. So when you push them, I hope you can okay, I'll, I'll put it next to the mic so you can hear it kind of good. Like every single key should really create this very clean, loud pop. Like a, we, we had a saxophone repairman here in Amsterdam, his, school is, his name is Nico, and uh, he, he retired now, but he was kind of famous for the fact that as a repairman, he did not play a note of saxophone, just did not play at all. But just by hearing the popping of the keys, he could instantly tell you know whether you had a good seal or not he could instantly tell a good saxophone from a bad one and he was somebody that a lot of people you know famous players love to use love to have work on their saxophone did not play a note of saxophone why because this just tells you so much and especially in the lower register so when you close the saxophone and you hit the lower notes that you can hear on this one also it's like just sounds like even if i put it very lightly you get this huge pop, like you can't feel it maybe in the camera, but it lasts like one, two, three, one, two, three. You can kind of feeling it vibrating through the whole instrument every time I, I hit that, that key. You can see it here as it goes. It just really pops very loudly. Now, when you have an instrument that, you know, if, if in any of the keys you get this a little bit more muffled or where it's very clear that it's not a clear like pop that kind of resonates through the instrument, then you instantly know, even if it's only one key, that uh, that, that setup is going to be, you know, a little bit more shaky. Because the effect of this, like when you, when you do a check throughout the whole instrument and you notice that every single key 
uh, resonates really well and especially when you start hitting the low keys because those won't pop also if you have some leaks you know more higher on the saxophone that if those low notes really pop that's when the magic really happens when you're playing low notes so also with uh, with this horn I like the the low notes come out of like blue roses in general like way more easily than on most saxophones but on this particular one right now when it's like absolutely perfectly tuned you can play the low notes on this as if you're you know playing in the middle of the register here i'll show you for a second <laughs> Playing low notes really loud is possible on even the leakiest of saxophones. But playing them really, really gently, just kind of, you know, easing them out very easily is, you know, the mark of a really great setup. Once you pick up a sax, like when you, when you hear this type of popping, it kind of already tells you that that's probably going to be possible on the horn that you're holding. So the pop test very very important and usually when you find a saxophone that pops really well you know try some low notes on it at a very very low volume and probably you're going to find that they're just going to be flowing out very very easily and of course that's what you want in your saxophone now the second thing you can look for is of course the visual quality of the pad so it's pretty easy you know to look at the sides and kind of look at the leather inside and uh, it's pretty easy to see if pads are kind of you know brand new like on this one so not kind of nothing to see there or if they're you know old look kind of dry look maybe moldy and uh, you know of course when you see that you know that uh, you know even though maybe the saxophone plays all right at that moment um, that you're going to need some overhauling or it's probably going to you know need a lot of work to kind of keep everything sealed and you're going to be you know constantly going to your tech or constantly you know messing with it yourself to keep it playing really good and the third thing which i think a lot of people uh, n never really even occurs to them to really check for this and to also keep checking for this and that is the neck to horn connection because when your neck leaks even a little bit it has a massive effect on the whole saxophone i spend like a lot of time on every saxophone making sure that the neck is completely airtight it's absolutely perfect i actually have a little i'll show it to you I have actually a special little tool for this. Let me put this to the side. So I actually have this. Now, granted, that is a bit of a you know saxophone uh, repairman specialist tool, but you can pick these up for like, I think 20 bucks or something. Uh, basically a neck checker. I don't really know what they're called, but you can probably Google for this and figure it out. And what it is, it's a rubber uh, ring, as you can see. And when I, when I twist this, these two parts, they compress the ring and make it go wider like this. And basically what I do is I take off the neck of the saxophone, I stick this in, I twist it so that it seals the neck, and then I put um, the neck on. So effectively what that does is it creates an airtight seal here below the connection point. And then I just blow into the neck as hard as I possibly can. And then it's very easy to see, like, can I still blow through it? Or is it absolutely 100%? You just cannot blow in it because it's completely sealed. And so that's how I know that the seal is not, you know, 99% or 98% or whatever. No, I know it's 100% perfect. And this makes a huge difference. Like if you have a saxophone at home that you think, plays a little bit heavy or is a little bit tough to play. Like I know a lot of people who uh, sometimes say, oh yeah, it's like this is, this is a bit of a tough horn, I have to play really hard, but then the sound is amazing. Usually that just means that your neck is leaking because right away, even before you hit any of the tone holes, you're like throwing away a lot of power. It's like you're trying to inflate, you know, like an inflatable animal or something, but there's just three holes in it and you can like, <laughs> but it's never going to build up you know, real pressure. And it's the same with the saxophone. If your neck is leaking, it's just, the, the low notes won't pop. It'll be like, it'll be hard. You know, it'll be much harder to get everything to sound right. And even if the leak is tiny, because it's a neck, so it's always kind of a tiny leak, this has a huge impact. And so 
If you don't have you know, a handy tool like this, there's a really cool, easy trick you can use at home to make sure, to kind of check if your neck is leaking at all. And what you use for that is your simple run-of-the-mill saxophone uh, cork grease. Because basically what you do is you just take your neck out, put some cork grease around the, the inside part of the neck, stick it in, have a paper towel of course ready to get it all out again. But for the periodic track, uh, check, this is a great, very cheap trick because the wax will always create kind of a perfect seal. Yeah, because it'll just fill up any holes or you know ways for the airs to escape that there are. And so do this today if you have the wax at home. And if you have a leaky neck, you will find that as soon as you put that wax in and you put the neck back in and you start playing, it'll be like having a whole new saxophone. You go, wow, had no idea my saxophone could play that easy. Could be, you know, have that much more projection, etc. If you have some kind of little leak in your neck, this one thing will make your instrument come alive like boom wow you know so that's a second really cool trick and those are really the two uh well let's say three things that i always uh, look at when i look at a saxophone so i look at the pop factor of course i visually inspect what's going on because that tells you a lot and the third one is that by now i just kind of know how a saxophone should feel you know how easy it should be so if there's any leak I kind of know already, but the way to check for me, of course, I use my little tool, which if I go to a fair, for example, I always have it with me because it's just very, very easy to check any horn you get into your hands. But if you're at home or you know, if, you're, if you're considering buying a saxophone you're in a store and they don't have a little tool like that, you can just say, hey, you know, can I put a little wax inside? Just want to check if the neck is 100% accurate. And that's a real game changer. So uh, three easy tips. Uh, if you want to know more, you know, like about how to reset your own springs and just basically all of the simpler things, but you know, some of them are not that simple that you can do yourself to keep your horn in great condition. Check out my course inside the saxophone. You can just find it through hellasaxophone.com. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it gave you some valuable insights on this beautiful Sunday. And uh, if there are other topics that you'd like me to talk about, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you get a notification when I post a new video. And uh, hopefully see you soon. Have a nice day playing the saxophone. Ciao.